right, today we're going to be doing some bass guitar for the Aurora Borealis Timeline CD. And uh, today we're going to be going with Ampeg cabinets. This is the, the B series cab. Last American made Ampeg cabs to my knowledge, so it's some pretty good stuff. We're going to be going with an AKG D112 microphone on top and bottom. We got a 10 inch up here, a 15 inch down there, so we're covering all, all the ranges. Uh, we'll blend these together in the control room and once again we're going to check for phasing just because nine times out of ten on the bass you get phasing same as the snare drum so we're going to be checking for that the mics are almost the same as guitar with a little bit more spacing on them uh, a couple inches away slightly off axis we've got the walls up same as before to kind of cut cut down on reflections off the walls coming back and other than that, I believe that's all I want to say about the, the cabs out in this room and we can go in the control room and check out what's going on in there. Here we are in the control room, uh, about to start laying some bass tracks down. We did multiple tests today to figure out you know, what combination we wanted to go with. And you know, after you know, a good solid hour of testing or so, we decided that we were going to go with an Ampeg SVT4 Pro head and we were going to go with the Modulus quantum sweet spot bass. Uh, we also tested today a Trace Elliott, an older one, an SMX series that sounded really good. Uh, you know, it sounded almost equally as good as the Ampeg, we just thought the Ampeg nudged it out a little bit. And we also tested a Ernie Ball Stingray bass. And the combination we liked, like I said, was the modulus with the Ampeg. So that's what we're going to go with today. It gave us a really full sound, not overly bitey, but still thick bottom. It sounds really good. As far as preamps, we're not going to go with the API today because we've used that just about on everything to this point. We're going to go with the Pacifica made by A Designs. It's a lot more smooth and less edgy than the uh, you know, API, but it still really delivers a full sound. I am going to be running it through an API EQ just to slightly, slightly grid it up a little bit. And that'll give it a nice change of pace from all the other API stuff. Uh, we're going to be running a distressor also, same as we used on everything else, just because they're so transparent and they sound so good. Just a couple dB of compression again, because if we need more, we can uh, get that later on. And other than that, I think we're ready to do some bass tracking. Hello, I'm Jason Ian Von Eckert, and we're at Night Sky Studios working on the new Aurora Borealis CD timeline. And for this one, we're using a Modulus Quantum Sweet Spot 6. It's got uh, Seymour Duncan pickups in it. We did A, B, a bunch of different bases and amps, including an old Ernie Ball Stingray uh, Trace L8 SMX amp, SVT4 Pro head. We did settle with the uh, SVT and the Modulus as the best combination to sit in the mix. Uh, and this is a really good bass. It's got a graphite neck, phenolic fingerboard, cuts through and is articulate pretty much in any register, any range. So it works out well for mixing. And pretty much good to go, so let's do some tracking. continuing the tracking for the new Aurora Borealis CD timeline. For this one we did decide to use a pick instead of fingers. We wanted to edge your attack with all the A-B comparisons we did between the amps and basses, fingers and picks. We chose for the pick, the modulus, and the Ampeg head. 
And for this one, I believe we are going to be doing a clip of a song you haven't seen before yet. This one is called Beyond the Orc Cloud. All right, we're going to take a break from doing bass for a little while, and we're going to do a vocal. Uh, we're going to do the vocal for the one that you guys heard everybody do the audition drums to, A Creature Called Human, which you also saw the guitars a little bit. And we're just going to be doing the lead vocal for this. Uh, no backgrounds, no anything like that, just a raw lead, uh, no EQ, just a little bit of compression. And we're going to use a, uh, for the most of the recording of the CD, we're going to be using a Neumann U87 microphone, pretty much an industry standard mic. For the backgrounds, we'll probably change it to a Neumann TLM-103 or maybe a AKG-414, something like that. And I'm going to use a, uh, a headphone system, Ethernet headphone system, so that I can get individual control over all the instrumentation in here. And it won't affect the guys in there doing the actual recording. So I'll have my own you know, control over drums, bass, guitar, vocal, etc., etc. And like I said, it won't affect anything those guys are doing in there. So, uh, yeah, let's give this a shot and see how it goes. Yeah, let's just uh, run an entire another one from the top. All right. Yeah, but that's not what that's all for. 